Leaked documents. Google employees considered censoring conservative media after 2016 election. Why is this not surprising to me in the least bit? Why is it that every single time someone mentions conservatives are being censored on social media, the left calls it a conspiracy theory? No matter how many times it happens. Oh, here's a story where Google employees were actually contemplating, trying to figure out how they could censor conservative media. Is it a conspiracy still? Like, come on, man. We just saw CJ Pearson get his account deleted after he defended Laura Loomer. Why did they delete it? Well, they said they accidentally, it was an accident, plain and simple. It's funny. Jesse Kelly got his, his account suspended. They said, oh, it was only supposed to be temporary. All of these accidents keep happening. It's always just an accident. Oh, no, we just, we made a mistake. On my main channel today, I, I had a video about Twitter. But let me just reiterate for those that may not have seen it. What I think happens is that the higher ups at Google, they absolutely do lean left, come on, at Silicon Valley. But the core employees who handle dealing with reporting and dealing with hate speech and the rules do not care. They don't. Why should a grunt making a moderate salary care? If you present them with two ideas, one person saying something bad about white people, one person saying something about black people, and they're far left, they'll say, well, white people are bad, so I'm going to ban this guy. They don't care. What's the worst that's going to happen? It's the CEO that's got to answer for the, for the bias. I think that's what's happening at Twitter. Let's read about what Google did, though. This is from Ash Shao. It's no secret that big tech swings to the left and that many in the industry were devastated that Hillary Clinton lost the 2016 election. But at Google... Some engineers debated whether the company should suppress conservative news websites. The Daily Caller and Breitbart were specifically mentioned to keep President Donald Trump from winning in 2020, according to internal documents obtained by the Daily Caller News Foundation. Whoa, you mean you're telling me employees at Google are trying to use their monopoly on search and the web to stop Trump from winning an election? Is anybody surprised by that? Yeah, I don't think so. But wh I, well, actually, maybe the left would, but they won't read it. You know, they won't. Now, I'm not a big fan of Breitbart, nor the Daily Caller. Breitbart is given a negative rating by NewsGuard. The Daily Caller is given a, given a positive rating by, by uh, NewsGuard. But I want to point out, if you want to talk about banning either of these, let's talk about some left-wing outlets that should be, should be banned. The, how about Daily Coast, right? Daily Coast is probably the Breitbart of the left. How about instead of the Daily Caller, I would compare the Daily Caller to something like Vox, right? Hyperbolic, far left. Vox actually published a defense of discriminating against Asian people in universities. Straight up racist. That's actually more than the Daily Caller has ever done in terms of extremist ideology. But I'm still going to say, because people will argue, we'll put the Daily Caller and Vox as like opposites to each other. All right, plain and simple. But what does Google do? Google says ban one, not the other. Of course. They said, this was an election of false equivalencies and Google sadly had a hand in it. Engineer Scott Beyer wrote on November 9th, 2016, according to the documents, how many times did you see the election, the election now card with items from opinion blogs, Breitbart Daily Caller, elevated next to legitimate news organizations? That's something that can and should be fixed. Oh, so maybe you'll get rid of Verge and Vox and BuzzFeed and Huffington Post and Splinter and Gawker and Gizmodo and Jezebel and Kotaku. You really want me to keep going on listing all of the organizations that are opinion blogs that regurgitate news that you didn't want to police? Please, Google, give me a break. I was about to swear there. I stopped myself. Further, Bayer suggested Google had a responsibility to expose the quality and truthfulness of sources because not doing so hides real information under loud noises and suggested teaching critical thinking before writing that the company makes sure we reverse things in four years. Demographics will be on our side. This sounds like Google employees trying to manipulate the public by blocking restricting conservative news sites or opinion blogs because they don't like those ideas. I'd love to see if they talked about other things. They even mentioned Drudge. Other employees were not so keen to censor, believing the move could backfire and lead, lead to conspiracy theories, according to the documents. Hey, that's good. Props to those employees. Thinking that Breitbart Drudge are not legitimate news sources is contrary to the beliefs of a major portion of our user base is partially what got us in this mess. MSNBC is not more legit than Drudge just because Rachel Maddow may be more educated, less deplorable, closer to our views than, say, Sean Hannity. Google engineer Uri Dekel, a Clinton supporter, wrote in response to Bayer. <laughs> Bravo, Uri Dekel. Spot on. I am not going to try and claim that Hannity or Rachel Maddow are more or less credible than each other because the truth is I don't like either of them. 
I don't like Rachel Maddow because I think she is hyperbolic, hyperpartisan, and she pumps out, like, you know what, man? Like, they're so similar. It's, it's really, it's like Rachel Maddow's like a left-wing Hannity. And I, I'm, I'm going to love when the right's like, how dare you say that about Hannity? And the left is like, how dare you say, say that about Rachel Maddow? Yeah, no, that's my opinion. I'm a centrist. When I watch Fox News, I watch Hannity, I roll my eyes. When I watch Laura Ingram, I roll my eyes. When I watch Tucker Carlson, I sometimes roll my eyes. I actually like Tucker. I don't think he's that bad. For real. I do think MSNBC actually has some decent people as well. Um, but not really their hosts, right? Like, I know, uh, I don't want to name any people. I don't want to put anyone else on blast. Tucker Carlson's a famous guy, so I have no problem saying, I don't really see eye to eye with him, but in terms of late-night opinion guys, I think he's actually kind of decent. There are some things he does where I'm like, ah, oh, come on, man. But that's, that's, that's fantastic. So, it's not all bad. We're, we're hearing that some employees wanted to do this, and, and they should be criticized for those fringe extremist opinions, but then you have good people here who can, who can see outside of their own shell. I follow a lot of right-wing folks on social networks. You could tell something was brewing. We laughed off Drudge's instant polls and all that stuff, but in the end, people go to those sources because they believe that media doesn't do its job. I'm a Hillary supporter, and let's admit it. The media avoided dealing with the hard questions and issues, which didn't pay off. By ranking legitimacy, you will introduce more conspiracy theories. Straight up, 100%. I'm f if this guy was the stopgap, if this guy was the, was the one who made sure this didn't happen, bravo to this dude. Buyer pushed back, according to the DCNF, writing that too many times Breitbart is just echoing a demonstrably made-up story. He added that MSNBC was guilty of this too, and insisted he didn't want a political judgment. The, the desire is to break the myth feedback loop, the false equivalency, instead of the current amplification of it. Breitbart is no different than many, like, like Daily Coast. Like, seriously, man, have you ever been to Daily Coast? Or Think Progress? Or Common Dreams? Dude, I can name all of these fringe left-wing opinion blogs that make up complete nonsense. It's not hard. There's actually relatively few on the right. Look, I use a service called NewsGuard, okay? It's, it's spelled the way it is. It's a Chrome extension. This is a series, this, this is a company led by professional journalists and researchers, and they, they rate news organizations based on a set of criteria. The Daily Wire receives a little green check mark. They're not perfect, but overall, what NewsGuard says is Daily Wire and Daily Caller are considered a healthy part of your news diet, as is Vox, as is BuzzFeed, okay? But Breitbart is not, and actually, I'm not entirely sure about Daily Coast. Let me just pop over and check. And I was right. Daily Coast receives a red exclamation point. They say, proceed with caution. This website generally fall, fails to maintain basic standards of accuracy and accountability. Now, I don't want to play the game of who's better or who's worse. The point is plain and simple, okay? You want to point the finger at Breitbart. Yeah, it's only because you're in the bubble. You're in the bubble and someone told you that's your enemy and that's what you focus on. Completely ignoring the same thing on the other side. So they say, Mike Browerman... Another Google engineer suggested giving users a fuller picture of the story. What I believe we can do technically that avoids the accusations of conspiracy or bias from people who ultimately have a right and obligation to decide what they want to believe is to get better at displaying the ripples and copy pasta to trace information to its source. I like this idea. To link, to link to critiques of those sources and let people decide what sources they believe. Give people a comprehensive but effectively summarized view of information, not context-free not context-free, rage-inducing sound bites, he wrote. The leaks of these documents is the latest hit to the corporation. In October, a video of Google presentation called The Good Censor leaked to Breitbart News and revealed the tech company believed free speech had gone awry. In January 2018, Google was caught incorrectly fact-checking conservative news websites while leaving left-leaning outlets untouched. The company quickly ended its fact-checking process. And we know for a fact Google, through its algorithm, was actually deranking conservatives and just beyond, like, look, it doesn't matter if they, if they intended to do it. The, the system did it. The reason for it is left-wing outlets are well-funded and are considered mainstream for the most part. Like Vox, all these journalists are like, oh, Vox is great. No, Vox is partisan for sure, right? But that no one's ever going to pit Vox up against Daily Wire because people on the left think Daily Wire is, 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 a, is not real news. They think Fox News is not real news. Well, I'm sorry, NewsGuard gives them both good ratings. All right, and news, if, if new, like when I see that NewsGuard is willing to say some right wing and some left wing are bad, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. They certainly give some weight to like the Daily Beast and to some other left wing outlets that I don't agree with, but I want to make sure I check my bias. So if an independent group of journalists are, are saying this is, this is, you know, worthy of, you know, this is worthy, this is worthy, I'm going to say, okay, 
Otherwise, it's just me being biased about sources I don't like. The point is, because of the size and because of the venture capital, left-wing outlets just get more clicks and Google prioritizes them. So it's not surprising to see that Google employees considered this. I'm glad it never happened, although it happened accidentally. Whatever. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you all. Just click click Timcast and go watch. I got, I got like 500 videos on this channel. Go watch them if you didn't watch them already. Watch more. Watch more of my videos. I appreciate it. Have a good one.